Looking at certain images can stir your emotions deeply, like when you look at photos of your family while you're traveling far from home. Seeing those photos can make you feel intimately connected to your loved ones. In a similar way, feelings of being intimately connected to Ishvara can be evoked when you visit a sacred temple and stand in front of the altar, looking at the beautiful consecrated deities, lovingly adorned with fine dress, jewelry, and garlands of fresh flowers. That sight can touch your heart and evoke a powerful sense of reverence and adoration. Now, in addition to seeing all this with your eyes, you can also see images with your mind. We all have the ability to visualize things, to imagine forms and images. Visualization is often used in the practice of upasana, devotional meditation. In upasana, your sense or feeling of Ishvara's divine presence can be deepened when you picture in your mind, as vividly as possible, the particular form of Ishvara that you're meditating on. Visualization not only deepens your sense of Ishvara's presence, but the image in your mind becomes the alambana, the object of meditation on which you concentrate your attention, which happens to be the approach to meditation taught by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras. The image in your mind becomes both a focus of devotion and a focus of concentration. In this way, by including aspects of the concentration techniques discussed in earlier chapters, your practice of upasana can be enhanced. The use of this visualization while you meditate becomes even more powerful when you fully understand the symbolism associated with the particular deity you're meditating on. Traditional depictions of Hindu deities are rich with symbolism. The posture, dress, ornaments, positions of arms, hands, and legs, all these are based on descriptions found in sacred scriptures, like the Puranas. The deities and temples around the world are all fashioned according to those scriptural descriptions. But nowadays, some artists have departed from that tradition and take considerable liberty in how they portray deities, like when they depict Ganesha playing musical instruments. Unfortunately, modern depictions like these often sacrifice much of the powerful traditional symbolism. It's surprising how powerful symbolism can be. A simple piece of cloth can evoke strong patriotic feelings when it happens to be your country's national flag. A little piece of paper becomes valuable if it happens to be a $100 bill. But if you don't recognize the flag or banknote for some reason, they wouldn't have any value for you at all. Symbols become powerful only when their symbolism is understood. For this reason, it's really important to understand the symbolism associated with the deity you meditate on. For example, this form of Shiva is called Nataraja, the king or lord of dance. His dance, as you may know, represents the cosmic drama in which the universe is created and destroyed again and again. In his upper right hand, he holds a damaru, a drum that signifies creation. Each beat of the drum represents the birth of a new universe. His upper left hand holds fire, a common symbol for destruction. His lower right hand is held in a special position called Abhaya Mudra, a mudra or hand symbol that indicates Abhaya, the total absence of anything to fear due to the protection of Shiva's blessings. His lower left hand points at his feet, 
indicating the place where devotees symbolically find refuge. He stands on a little demon who represents ignorance. In Hinduism, ignorance is the source of all that's considered evil, which is effortlessly overcome by Shiva in his playful dance. There's actually more symbolism here that we could discuss, but this much is plenty to show the richness and importance of sacred symbolism. Symbolism that's associated not just with Shiva, but with every deity. To support your practice of Upasana, if you have an Ishtadevata, a favorite deity, you should certainly learn all the symbolism associated with it. There are many resources that can help you, on the internet, in bookstores, and in libraries. The next exercise makes use of the symbolism associated with Shiva. In this exercise, you'll visualize Shiva's form while silently reciting the mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, Salutations to Shiva. For this exercise, it's best if you sit in a place that's suitable for meditation. You can listen to this exercise using a laptop computer, a tablet, or a mobile device like your phone. This exercise is also available as a podcast or download from our website using the links in the video description below. I hope you are now seated comfortably in a suitable place. This exercise will take about 10 to 15 minutes. First, sit with a proper posture, as we discussed before. Close your eyes gently and take a deep breath to get settled down. Now, make a sankalpa to affirm your intention and commitment to meditate. Acknowledge the fact that you have many unfulfilled responsibilities and issues that need to be addressed. Since you don't want to be distracted by those things during this meditation, you can give yourself permission to set all those concerns aside just for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Next, we'll perform the progressive relaxation exercise like in previous lessons. Start by turning your attention to your feet. Become aware of sensations there. Notice a sense of pressure as your feet press down. Notice a touch of your clothing and feelings of warmth or coolness. Now, become aware of any tension that might be held in the muscles of your feet and let go of that tension. Allow those muscles to relax completely. Next, turn your attention to your ankles and calves. Notice sensations of pressure, the touch of your clothing, warmth or coolness. Become aware of any tension held in the muscles of your ankles and calves and let go of that tension completely. Next, turn to your knees and thighs. Notice the weight of your hands or arms where they rest. Notice any other sensations. Become aware of any tension held in your knees and thighs and let go of that tension completely. Next, turn to the trunk of your body. Feel the weight of your body pressing down. Feel the firmness of the seat beneath you. Let go of any tension. Next, turn to your lower back and stomach together. Become aware of sensations. Let go of any tension. Now, turn to your upper back and chest. Become aware of sensations 
and let go of any tension. Now, your shoulders, arms, and hands. Become aware of sensations and let go of any tension. Finally, your neck, face, the muscles around your eyes, at your temples, and across your forehead. Let go of any tension. Now, we'll chant the mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, salutations to Shiva. Chant silently as you listen to me. Allow the mantra's sound and meaning to invoke a sense of Shiva's infinite power and limitless energy, as represented by his cosmic dance of creation and destruction. Om Namah Shivaya 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 Now, imagine that you're entering a sacred temple where Shiva has been worshipped for centuries. Imagine walking into a huge, darkened hall with a brightly lit altar where an exquisitely beautiful form of Shiva stands majestically, garlanded with fresh flowers. Imagine yourself standing right in front of the deity, marveling at its beauty as you chant. Om Namah Shivaya 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 Om Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Now, picture in your mind Shiva's magnificent form on the altar with his right leg raised as he performs the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. Notice the Damaru drum in his upper right hand, symbolizing his power to create the world. And notice the fire in his upper left hand, indicating his power to bring about the dissolution of the entire universe. Om Namah Shivaya 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 Om Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Now, picture in your mind Shiva's magnificent form on the altar with his lower right hand held in a mudra 
that blesses you with his never-ending protection from all that's inauspicious. And his lower left hand pointing to his feet, showing you where you can find refuge from all suffering. Om Namah Shivaya 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 Now, in the final part of this exercise, picture in your mind Shiva's magnificent form on the altar and notice how incredibly powerful and graceful the deity is. Notice the beautiful garland of fresh flowers hanging from his neck. Notice the heap of flowers lovingly offered at his feet. Notice the burning lamps and incense offered in his worship. Om Namah Shivaya 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 Now, as we conclude this exercise, just listen to these closing remarks. You can practice this technique whenever you want, listening to this exercise again or without it. If you practice it independently, you can visualize any deity you choose and silently recite a mantra addressed to that deity. In the next lesson, we'll discuss how the deity in a temple represents the presence of Ishvara within you.